I want you to imagine possessing the kind of influence that reshapes the media landscape of America's wealthiest and most powerful city, New York. With just a few taps on your smartphone, you could sway the fortunes of politicians, magnets, and even nations overnight. This level of power, akin to a Machiavellian fantasy, is intoxicating yet daunting, as maintaining such dominance over decades, let alone a century, is a monumental feat that few could achieve. Today, we delve into the saga of a family that has mastered this art, the Ox Salzberger dynasty, owners of the New York Times for over 120 years. In 1896, the pivotal chapter of this family's story began when Adolf Ox, a media mogul from Chattanooga, Tennessee, acquired the New York Times during its nadir. At that time, the newspaper's circulation had dwindled to a mere 9,000 daily copies, a fraction of its competitors' numbers, primarily due to rampant inefficiencies and the rise of yellow journalism, sensationalist and often dubious reporting propagated by rivals like William Randolph Hearst's New York Journal and Joseph Pulitzer's New York World. This backdrop set the stage for Ox's ambitious plan to revitalize the floundering publication. Born into a distinguished Jewish family in Germany, Ox immigrated to the United States, where he quickly climbed the journalistic ladder. By 1884, he had already turned the Chattanooga Times into a model of success. His vision for the New York Times was to restore its status as the definitive American newspaper, revered not just nationally but globally. Ox's strategy for revitalization was multifaceted. He married Effie Wise, daughter of the influential American Jewish leader Rabbi Isaac Mayer Wise. This union brought him into the fold of the powerful Salzberger family, including Cyrus and Ferdinand, who were deeply entrenched in the cotton trade and legal fields, respectively. With the Salzberger's support, Ox implemented a series of reforms aimed at enhancing journalistic standards and reducing operational costs. They invested in advanced printing technology and leveraged their extensive social networks to secure lucrative advertising contracts and exclusive news scoops. By 1904, the New York Times had not only averted financial ruin but also relocated to the tallest building in Longacre Square, later renamed Times Square, symbolizing its rising ambitions. This move coincided with a period of significant editorial triumphs, including the newspaper's critical acclaim for its coverage of the Titanic sinking in 1912, which earned it a Pulitzer Prize for public service the following year. The 1920s saw further consolidation of the Ox Salzberger legacy as Adolf's son-in-law, Arthur Hayes Salzberger, joined the Times. His rise within the organization was meteoric, assuming the role of publisher by 1935. Under his leadership, the newspaper continued to expand its influence and uphold its commitment to journalistic integrity. Throughout this period, the New York Times was more than just a newspaper. It was a symbol of media prestige and power, integral to the fabric of New York City and American public life. The family's adept navigation of business challenges and their strategic marital alliances ensured that the Times remained a dominant force in American journalism. As we explore the monumental rise of the Ox Salzberger family, it is clear that their story is not merely one of maintaining legacy but also of visionary leadership and relentless pursuit of excellence. The journey from the brink of bankruptcy to the pinnacle of media influence is not just a testament to their capabilities but also a blueprint for media dynasties globally. In recounting their story, we see a vivid illustration of how power, strategy, and history intertwine in the relentless pursuit of influence and success. As the world teetered on the brink of monumental changes with the onset of World War II, the Great Depression, and rapid technological advancements, the New York Times faced its own critical tests of resilience and integrity. In 1935, Arthur Hayes Salzberger, son-in-law of Adolf Ox, assumed the role of publisher, inheriting a legacy of journalistic supremacy that was about to be challenged by global upheavals. Under Salzberger's stewardship, the Times navigated through the tumultuous waters of World War II, the Cold War, and the Vietnam War. He was not content with merely dominating the domestic news landscape and expanded the Times' reach internationally by establishing overseas bureaus. These strategic moves aimed to provide balanced and thorough coverage of global events, thereby cementing the Times' reputation as a newspaper of international standing. At the core of the Ox Salzberger dynasty was Iphigene Ox Salzberger, Arthur's formidable wife and Adolf's daughter. More than just a figurehead, Iphigene was a vital force in the Times' operations, serving on the board of directors and advocating for significant roles for women within the organization. Her efforts extended beyond the newsroom, she was deeply involved in arts and education, reflecting the family's broader societal influence. 
The transformation of the New York Times into a public company in 1967 marked a new era of diversification and growth. This move, while introducing public shares, ensured that the reins of power remained within the Salzburger lineage. The family expanded their media empire to include radio and television stations, as well as magazines, thus broadening their influence. In 1971, the Times' journalistic courage was boldly demonstrated by its decision to publish the Pentagon Papers, revealing hidden details of the Vietnam War. This act triggered a major legal battle with the Nixon administration, a confrontation that ended with a Supreme Court decision reinforcing the First Amendment rights of the press. That same year, the Times faced internal challenges as well, with labor strikes from the Newspaper Guild disrupting operations and igniting a reassessment of the Salzburger stewardship. The 1970s and 1980s were decades of innovation and adaptation for the Times. Responding to the evolving media landscape, the family took the company public, a strategic decision that infused the newspaper with necessary capital but diluted the family's control. This period also saw the Times expanding its content with new sections like Science Times and intensifying its focus on investigative journalism, thereby maintaining its status as a leading intellectual authority. Throughout these challenges, the Salzberger family demonstrated a nuanced understanding of legacy management and the importance of evolving with the times. Their handling of the Pentagon Papers and the coverage of the Watergate scandal exemplified a commitment to journalistic integrity and courage. Moreover, their early adoption of computerized typesetting in the 1970s showcased their foresight in embracing technological innovations, ensuring the New York Times not only survived but thrived amid the fast-paced changes of the 20th century. By the close of the third generation of Ox Salzberger stewardship, the family had navigated the New York Times through crises of war, technological shifts, and internal turmoil, learning vital lessons about balancing tradition with innovation, a testament to their enduring influence and adaptability in the face of both adversity and opportunity. The Salzberger family stewardship of the New York Times has always been characterized by strategic foresight and adaptability. This ethos was evident as they embraced technological innovations, which significantly reduced production costs and increased operational efficiency. Their strategic acquisitions, including the purchase of the Boston Globe in 1993, demonstrated a keen understanding of diversification and risk management, hallmarks of old money wisdom. In 1997, Arthur Salzberger Jr. ascended as the fourth-generation leader, confronting the digital upheaval reshaping the media landscape. His tenure was marked by a determined push towards modernization, investing heavily in digital infrastructure while streamlining the print edition to suit contemporary aesthetics. These reforms were not merely cosmetic, they signified a fundamental shift towards a more dynamic and financially sustainable global news platform. However, the transition to digital, while securing the Times' future, also presented unprecedented challenges. The early 21st century was a period of intense scrutiny and turmoil for the newspaper. The devastating attacks on September 11, 2001, propelled the Times into the epicenter of global attention. The paper's comprehensive coverage of the tragedy and its aftermath, which earned six Pulitzer Prizes, underscored its vital role in national discourse. Yet. The very fabric of the Times' esteemed reputation was threatened in 2003 by the Jason Blair scandal. Blair's journalistic fabrication sparked a crisis of credibility, prompting the Times to undertake significant editorial reforms to preserve its integrity. This episode highlighted the delicate balance between maintaining rigorous journalistic standards and navigating the pitfalls of a rapidly evolving media environment. The financial turmoil of 2008 further tested the Salzburgers' resolve. Amidst a global economic downturn that saw many venerable publications falter, the New York Times navigated through financial instability with prudent management and a steadfast commitment to quality journalism. The introduction of a digital subscription model in 2011 marked a pivotal moment, bolstering the newspaper's revenue and setting a precedent for the industry at large. As Ag Salzberger took the helm in 2015, the Times embarked on a digital renaissance. Prioritizing digital subscriptions, the newspaper expanded its online presence, embraced innovative technologies, and refined its business strategies. This approach paid dividends, as evidenced by a surge in subscription numbers, further solidifying the Times' position as a leading news authority through pivotal events such as the COVID-19 pandemic and the 2020 US presidential election. However, the journey was not without controversy. 
Criticisms of biased reporting and a perceived departure from journalistic neutrality have clouded the Times' reputation in recent years. Accusations of national bias during the Iranian nuclear crisis and a persistent bad news bias have sparked debates over the newspaper's editorial choices. As the New York Times navigates the complexities of the 21st century under the Salzburger dynasty, it confronts both the opportunities of digital transformation and the challenges of upholding journalistic integrity in an era of polarized media. The Salzburger's legacy, built on a foundation of innovation and ethical journalism, faces its most critical test as it strives to adapt to the demands of a new generation of readers while remaining faithful to its core values. As the 21st century unfolded, the Salzberger family found themselves not just managing the New York Times' legacy of journalistic integrity but also defending it against escalating controversies and legal challenges. One such instance was the courtroom drama with Project Veritas, a conservative activist group. The Times faced a temporary publishing ban by a New York judge, a significant legal confrontation stemming from accusations of improperly quoting confidential documents. This episode was a stark reminder of the delicate balance between public interest journalism and legal boundaries. Amidst the tumultuous tenure of the Trump administration, accusations of biased reporting intensified. Critics argued that the New York Times was not merely documenting events but seemed to be shaping the narrative, contributing to an already polarized public discourse. This period tested the Salzburgers' resolve as they navigated the fine line between comprehensive reporting and perceived partisanship. Despite these challenges, the Ox Salzburger dynasty remained the indomitable force behind the Times, holding a monopoly on the voting shares and thus significantly influencing the newspaper's editorial and commercial strategies. Detractors labeled this control as a hegemonic stranglehold that threatened the paper's claimed impartiality. In contrast, the Salzburgers maintained that their leadership was crucial in safeguarding the paper's editorial independence. The controversies surrounding the New York Times under the Salzburgers' watch highlight a complex legacy. On one hand, their stewardship has steered the newspaper through significant historical events and technological shifts, maintaining its status as a premier news outlet. On the other hand, the persistent critiques of bias and legal entanglements have posed substantial threats to its reputation. This ongoing saga of power, media influence, and public trust illustrates the immense responsibility borne by those who control one of America's most influential newspapers. The debate continues as to whether the Salzberger family's century-long reign represents a bastion of thoughtful and secure news stewardship or if it harbors elements of a more problematic dominion over public discourse. As we delve deeper into the implications of this dynastic control over the New York Times, questions arise about the future of journalism itself, how it adapts to new challenges and remains a pillar of democracy without succumbing to the perils of power and bias. The answers may well shape the landscape of media and public information for generations to come, as the Salzburger legacy is scrutinized in the harsh light of 21st century controversies. As we reflect on the storied legacy of the Ox Salzburger family's stewardship over the New York Times, we traverse a narrative rich with innovation, leadership, and not without its share of controversies. From its inception under Adolf Ochs in 1896, the Times has evolved under the family's guidance from a faltering paper into a bastion of journalism, celebrated for its integrity and depth of coverage. Throughout the 20th century, the family's strategic decisions, from the integration of new printing technologies to the expansion into international reporting, were pivotal in maintaining the newspaper's prominence. The bold move in 1971 to publish the Pentagon Papers epitomized the Times' commitment to impactful journalism, bolstering public knowledge while facing immense legal pressures. However, the dawn of the 21st century brought with it challenges that tested the Salzberger's helm. The digital revolution demanded rapid adaptation. Arthur Salzberger Jr.'s tenure was marked by significant shifts towards online integration, which preserved the time's relevance as print's dominance waned. Investments in digital platforms during his leadership enabled the Times to survive the tumultuous shifts that saw many legacy papers fold. The events of September 11, 2001, demonstrated the critical role of responsible journalism. The Times' coverage of the attacks and their aftermath earned multiple Pulitzer Prizes, reaffirming its status as a pillar of American media. Yet, this period was not without internal strife. The Jason Blair scandal in 2003 revealed cracks in editorial oversight, 
prompting a sweeping reassessment of practices and procedures to restore its tarnished reputation. Fast forward to more recent years, under the leadership of A.G. Salzberger, The Times has embraced a digital-first approach, significantly expanding its online subscriber base. This shift not only reflects a strategic adaptation to changing media consumption patterns but also represents a proactive approach to sustaining journalism's future. The introduction of innovative formats and the expansion of investigative reporting have continued to keep the times at the forefront of the industry. Nevertheless, the road has been rocky. Controversies, particularly around perceived biases and the handling of high-profile news stories, have sparked debates about the times' impartiality. Incidents like the temporary publishing ban during the Project Veritas case and criticisms during the Trump administration have fueled discussions on media ethics and the responsibilities of journalistic institutions in a polarized society. As we stand today, the New York Times, under the Ox-Salzberger dynasty, faces a landscape that is fundamentally different from the one Adolf Ox navigated. The challenges of modern media, balancing editorial integrity with financial viability, addressing accusations of bias, and harnessing technological advancements, pose continuous tests to their legacy. We invite readers and thinkers, journalists and critics, to engage in a vital discourse on the future of journalism and the role of legacy institutions like the New York Times. How do we preserve the sanctity of news in an era of unprecedented access and influence? What measures can be taken to ensure that these pillars of media maintain their role as unbiased purveyors of truth? Your voice is crucial. Join the conversation in the comments below. Share your views on the Salzburgers century-long stewardship. Is it a beacon of thoughtful governance, or does it reflect a need for new perspectives in the governance of news organizations? As we ponder these questions, we also encourage you to explore further discussions about New York's influential families and their impact on media, culture, and public policy. Click through to our in-depth analysis of other dynasties, such as the Rockefellers, and contribute to a broader understanding of how power and responsibility shape our society. Thank you for being part of this critical examination of one of America's most formidable media empires. Your insights not only enrich this dialogue but also help chart the course for a transparent, accountable, and forward-thinking journalistic future.